Now, we will go over implementing validation and feedback. Before we get into the how of implementing validation in our application, it is important to ask why we want to implement validation in the first place. And there's a couple good reasons we might want to validate the input. Firstly, security. No user input should be allowed to enter the model layer without validation. There's a question of usability. Early validation and feedback provide a better user experience overall. There's also the issue of resource usage. Validation on the UI reduces faulty form submissions and server load. In real world application design, it's important to have control over both user input and output. A robust validation is done on multiple layers and it never relies solely on the user interface. When we're implementing validation and feedback, it's good to be aware of LifeRay's utility classes. LifeRay software provides utility classes for validation, but also for other common tasks like string manipulation, date formatting, and parameter handling. Many of these utilities can be found in the com.liferay.portal.kernel.util package and in the Petra libraries. Input validation in LifeRay DXP looks a little like the following. On the client side, we have an alloy validator tag with AUI input, AUI select, LifeRay-UI input-date, and LifeRay-UI input-search. We also have Twitter bootstrap validators with clay components. On the server side, we have validator utility classes. And here's an example of that alloy validator in context. Specifically, this is an AUI validator tag within an AUI-input tag. Custom rules can be created, but they must return either true for valid or false for invalid inputs. Twitter bootstrap validators are also available. And here is an example using Clay. Here is another example of some backend validation. Another feature that LifeRay DXP has is the anti samey input sanitizer. Although not a validation functionality in and of itself, although not a validation functionality in and of itself, there is an additional security module that protects against malicious user input. That is the anti samey input sanitizer. The anti samey module leverages the OWASP anti samey library, processing user input on form submissions and stripping away all the HTML elements and content not explicitly allowed. This allows you to explicitly define what HTML elements and syntax you do want to allow. You can find this inside the configuration section of the control panel under system settings in security tools. And there you'll find it labeled as anti samey sanitizer. In addition to an input validation and output validation for malicious content should be done to prevent malicious code from executing. Usually this means escaping content prior to its displaying. On the client side, escaping can be done with a standard JSTL library. And on the server side, the LifeRay HTML util class can be used. So here are some guidelines as to the validation process. We want to make sure that we establish validation always on both the client and server sides. Client side validation does not guarantee security, which is why we also want to establish it on the server side. We want to establish control over all user contributed input. We want to establish control over all output. And we want to escape the output on the user interface if there is a instance of malicious code. Escaping of input should be done on render time, not storing time. These aren't exhaustive guidelines as to what to do in every situation but they are good things to keep in mind as we are implementing validation for our application. Another thing we can do with app, our application is the implementation of feedback. Specifically, this feedback comes in the form of server-side validation messages, which are transported to the user interface with session errors, 
and session messages. And you can see an example of that in the portlet class. Now here's an example in the view.jsp. You can see we're using the liferay-ui success tag for the success message and the liferay-ui error tag for the error message, as well as some text in the language.properties as to the content of these messages. And finally, the render of that error message within the UI. Liferay DXP does set default success messages for portlet actions, and you're controllable with the add process action success action property. Now, for the exercises, these are going to be the steps we are going to use to implement validation. We're going to validate user input on the user interface. We're going to customize the anti sami to filter input on Forbes submissions. We're going to do backend validation and add messages to the session objects. We're going to show validation feedback on the screen using the liferay-ui tag library. And finally, we're going to validate user contributed output. Thank you.